All right, guys, after about three hours of fighting, I got this in. I was having trouble getting the pin on the torque converter to go into the flywheel. So I had to pull it back out. I put some Vaseline on the input pin and on the inside of the flywheel to help it get lined up. And then once I got it lined up, it was pretty easy going from there. But it fought with me and I didn't film all of it. I don't know what the deal was, but just didn't want to go back in its home. Uh, I've kind of got a mock up going here. I've got the park and brake back on and adjusted. There is a star wheel adjuster down below and I took a, uh, I'll show you here in a minute. I took a butter knife and made a tool to adjust that because it's in a really tight spot. But I got that all installed and adjusted. Um, we're down to a few other things here that I want to work on. One of the things I want to work on is this, uh, these heaters. Now, I, they put out a tremendous amount of heat. However, there's a leak in the system because I think what happens is air bubbles go up in there and get trapped and it creates pressure and then it, they just leak. So, for whatever reason, uh, I'm going to put a high point in that area somewhere using uh, one of these and this is off uh, I think it's a Honda VTX motorcycle or something like that but it will allow me to put a T in there somewhere and then put this up at a high point so that I can fill very slowly obviously because this is half inch um, the cooling system but there won't be any bubbles in it I can bleed the bubbles off through a funnel up here so that's one thing I want to knock out I'm still waiting on a replacement uh, speed sensor uh, I think it'll be here today but don't quote me on that uh, postal service has been real weird lately but I do have the harness and I need to do the wiring on that and research that a little bit more on how that's wired up um, this is going to be the new transmission cooler I'm deleting the one that's in the radiator because of the instructions that you saw there from the transgo kit and this is uh, I think this is an 18,000 gross vehicle weight rated cooler and they suggest something 14,000 or greater so I think this will do the job it's 16 pass it's already got the correct fittings on it for the lines that I have um, and then it's got a fan on it here's the part number here's the dimensions I'll leave a link down in the description for this I also got this with it it's a thermostat uh, you wire it to 12 volts and then uh, it'll turn on at 180 and off at 165 so I figured I'd add that in just to simplify the whole install and I believe take this out here. these things are really nice uh, I normally don't buy a, like an all-in-one kit like this, but these look really nice. And uh, Nick recommended using one because he has one on his Tucker and he really likes it. So for whatever reason, I ordered one. We've got some fittings and some instructions. Looks to be a really well-made kit. And you guys are probably wondering, well, where the heck am I going to put this thing? Well, I got plenty of space in this cat. So what I thought I would do, is you see that nice little open space over there? I think we'll just mount it right there. I'll through bolt it to the tunnel, and then I can run my... can't really see it because all these wires are in the way, but I do have a transmission filter there. And so what I'll do is... The feed side is right here, so there's the feed fitting. That'll come over and tie into the transmission filter, so it'll hit the filter first. Go to the cooler, and then the, the cooler will come back and go into that guy down there. So that's the return. So yeah. And then I have this, and I tested it 
This is the gauge for the transmission temperature sender. And I have to install this in line. And I'll probably do that on the return. It looks like it's probably going to be the easiest. But I don't know until I start putting everything together. <clears throat> One of the other things that I wanted to work on. I'm trying to figure out a solution <clears throat> to these. You see this leak down here? It's on both sides. And what it is is these steering band rods that go into my case here. There's no seal on them. Um, I printed up the diagram for them for an OC12. These are 1960s era pictures here. But uh, if you look here at number 44, see there's something sitting there. Anyhow, part number 44 here is a brake band rod seal. See this part number 44? There's two of them, it's a seal, it's a steering band rod. Right there on the outside of the case at the front. Nothing inside the case, because if you look at 79, 79 is just a quarter inch steel spacer for the spring to rest against. So thinking about what I could use for that, I just randomly bought a brake caliper piston boot kit. Now I think these are way too big to, to fit into those spaces in there, but I'm wondering if I could use these on the inside somehow. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about this, but these ideally are what you want because it, they collapse like this. And so when you pull on the, on the brake to activate the brake, these will extend out. And the, remember the brake only moves three-eighths to five-eighths of an inch. So there's plenty of movement in these boots here. But that's my thought process on trying to fix that. I don't know if this will work, but I'll have to figure out something. I may have to take the band uh, rods out and drill uh, to fit this so I could tap it in because it's a steel insert. So that kind of goes in there and, and it's just pressure fit in there. That might be a solution, but I don't know until I take that apart. So that's probably going to be as far as I'm going to go today for this episode since I'm waiting on some parts and uh, Yeah, I'm just taking my time with this. I want to get it done correctly before I put everything back together and find out that the transmission doesn't work so I can start over again. And you know how that process goes. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case, but there's just this thought in the back of my head that, you know, what if this happens again? I think that that previous transmission I had had a, a damage in it already. And uh, I was just the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And I totally finished it off by putting it in a snow cat. It probably had uh, low pressure issues and all kinds of stuff. So I'm glad I went through the transmission that Nick gave me and, and, you know, put brand new parts in it and put it together. But, you know, fingers crossed everything works as it should. I shifted it through the gears and turned it by hand and everything seems smooth. The parking pole works and everything like that. So I'm hoping uh, everything will go as planned. But uh, as far as today goes, I think that's going to be it, guys. If you uh, like this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe. Taking care of each other. And as always, I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.